Today, we're going to be exploring low tide and showing you a simple yet delicious recipe. So what you see here, you might have to squint to see it, but it's a northern kelp crab, also known as a shield back crab, just because of the shape of its back. It looks just like a shield. You can see how well camouflaged they are, and they often just eat kelp, just like their name suggests, seaweed, algae, and they're often found in intertidal zones like this one. Not 10 feet where we were, here's four kelp crab, and you can see two of them are trying to mate. I personally don't think they're very good eating texture, kind of like a mushy texture, and there's not really any regulations, but let me know in the comments below if you've ever eaten a kelp crab or if you've had any past experience with them. There's a lot of shells where we are right now, abalone shells, and you can see this one's kind of large. If you saw one of our past videos, we'll link it up above. You can tell this one's about the size of my palm, so it's pretty old, maybe six to 10 years, maybe even more. And there's just littered with these shells, these beautiful shells all along this beach. I don't think you can see it, but it's actually a monkey-faced eel and it looks a little juvenile. It doesn't look too big, but it's stuck on a line right here. It went crazy. I was See, it's right there. Let's see. We're gonna let him go. Yeah, we don't need him. We have some sea stars over here, and there's tons of them. Just kind of half in, half out of the water. If you see sea stars in the area where you're walking around, you should try not to disturb them, don't remove them from the water. They play a pretty big part, just like everything else in the local environment. And they also help out by eating sea urchin as part of their diet. And of course, that's always a good thing if you want the abalone numbers to come back up. This one's kind of wrapped around like a rock, which is what you'd kind of see if it was eating a sea urchin. They just kind of envelop it. Their stomach comes out from the middle. This muscle isn't alive, but it's still attached by its beard. So we're not gonna be grabbing too many, we're just gonna be grabbing a couple, and we're gonna be using these to make muscle frites today. The daily limit per person for muscles is 10 pounds. So if you're having a slower day foraging, something that you can do that'll be a win for both you and the environment is to help just pick up some trash. For example, this is something I found just now. It's a little weight and it has a swivel as well. So, you know, that's a win for obviously cleaning up the local area and you get something else for your fishing tackle box. We're back in the kitchen after harvesting some mussels. And as you can see, we didn't grab too many. We only grabbed 10 mussels. Today we're making a classic French-Belgian dish called moule frites, which translates to mussels and fries. Right now they're, they're in the potato form, but I'll show you how to make this quick and easy snack. First thing we did with our potatoes was quickly rinse them, and now we're gonna cut them into thin strips, keeping the length of the potato, but keeping the width about a quarter to a half an inch. With the potatoes all cut and the fry form shaped, we're now gonna blanch it starting from cold water and this will help the fries keep its shape and rigidity. Just gonna salt the water a little bit. We'll be blanching it for 15 minutes in boiling water. The blanching is all set and what I'm gonna do is transfer the fries just to a tray with some paper towels just so that they aren't overly dried. Then we'll cook the fries in canola oil at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. While the fries are frying, we're gonna get started on our mussels and the first step we're gonna do is cook down the butter and the measurements we'll give it below in the description box, but we'll just say healthy amount of butter for now. And we're gonna be cooking the parsley. What you can do is just, just really do a, a rough rip of the parsley leaves. 
This really help to start your flavoring. So we're gonna cook the shallots and I did a rough chop of about one shallot and we're gonna cook it for about two minutes until they're a little browned and fragrant. You can see the shallots have browned and what we're gonna do is add in our wine. Deglaze it, cook down the wine so after about two to four more minutes, we're gonna add in our mussels that we collected. You can remove the fries from the oil once they reach your desired browning. The alcohol has mellowed down a little bit, so now we're just gonna throw in the mussels. And we're gonna cover and cook it until all the mussels are open, so it's gonna be about five, maybe to seven minutes. So right here, I have my own personal little mixture. It's with parsley flakes. I have celery salt, paprika, kosher salt, and garlic powder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some of the fries into here and just toss it, just coat them. So they're perfectly good fries. Mmm. And all the mussels have now opened up. Just gonna pour it in. Oh my god, I can, it smells amazing. I could probably drink that broth straight up. Another good addition would, of course, be just bacon as well. Probably make the broth a lot more flavorful. All right, let's dig in. I'm gonna eat a fry first. Mmm. Mmm. That seasoning fries. is so good. Ooh. Also, we haven't eaten anything all day, so it's like really good to finally have some food. Tiny muscle, but... It's really good, especially with the fries. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. I definitely would remake this, right? Yeah, for sure. I don't know if you can see, but it's just... The fry is like kind of golden brown. Super crunchy, but soft in the middle because we blanched it. Yeah. It's so good. Can't even stop eating while we're trying to talk about it. But yeah, these fries are delicious. The seasoning on it is like perfect. I think also they always really great with it. And the muscles add a little bit of sweetness. Um, mm -hmm. I think cooking it also in the, the wine was a really good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, we're definitely gonna make this again and we're probably gonna make it soon. Um, the yeah. next time we're all foraging. If you'd like to make this um, recipe, Make sure to check out the description below and we'll list the ingredients, how to make it step by step. And if you enjoyed our videos, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.